Today on the electric tractor conversion, we're going to be de-icing, and what ice means in the world of electric vehicles is the internal combustion engine system. So that's not just the engine, but it's the, the gas tank, the muffler, and everything else related to it. So first there I'm taking the muffler off because that's really easy, but then I'm going to kind of start from the top, work my way down. Uh, right away the gas tank is up on top, so I figured a good way to drain that was at this fuel filter right here. So I closed the valve removed the glass globe that's on there, uh, put a funnel under there, just held that in place with the zip tie, and opened the valve. Now I didn't have some uh, vinyl tubing handy, otherwise I would have put that on the bottom of the funnel to run into the bucket, so instead I just let it drip straight down into the bucket. There was actually a lot more gas in here than I thought there was, and it uh, frankly it took a while to drain. I was really surprised. All I can say right now is how awful this smells and the old carburetors and everything. My garage has smelled like gas ever since I put the tractor in here. Um, this has basically been a gasoline-free garage. You know, I've used this for my workshop, park and charge my electric car, and it'll uh, be good to have the gas out of here. So here's the actual gas tank itself. It's kind of behind this cowl or instrument panel under the steering wheel. And the gas tank is mounted to this bracket with a bolt back here. And then there's also a bolt in the front on both sides, front and back. So I have to kind of move the cowl, pull that bolt, and then get that entire gas tank pulled out probably over the top out from under the cowl. So bolt number one of the gas tank is out just goes to this bracket and it looks like that bracket is held on top of the transmission. And the next bolt to get the gas tank off is kind of back in here. So I need to take off this to take off the gas tank. So first thing I'm going to do down here, take off the uh, air intake hose. Looks like that's three quarters inch. Ooh, I need the bigger wrench. Breaker bar. There we go. On the back side of the gas tank, I was able to reach right down with my socket extension, but I didn't know for sure if this was a nut and bolt or if it was just a, a nut on a, a welded on threaded stud. Uh, I was able to take it off, but even then, um, really wouldn't move. I had to get my pry bar in there. It turned out there was a washer that was uh, really kind of corroded and sealed on good. Once I got that off, I was able to loosen the gas tank. Even after I had all four bolts removed from the gas tank, I still couldn't seem to get it out. It just seemed like it was kind of pinned under the uh, instrumentation cowl. So I had the bright idea to take off the steering wheel so that I could get the cowl off. Now, of course, to do that, I'd need to take off that giant nut in the middle of the steering wheel. And to do that, I needed some way to be able to hold the steering wheel while I undid the nut. So I decided I would weld together a giant spanner wrench to hold the steering wheel in place. So now I'm hoping I can use this to hold the steering wheel in position while I loosen the nut. The spanner actually did work pretty well, but there was just simply no way to be able to get enough strength to loosen the nut. So I slipped on a, a couple of feet of steel pipe onto both the wrench and the spanner. Oh my God, that worked. <laughs> Leverage! I can't believe this thing actually worked. Seems like uh, I never have the right tool, you know. 
I usually try something about eight different ways and get really frustrated. And this actually worked once I was able to hold both this and the big wrench and the pipes on there all at the same time. So I'm trying to move this around and it feels like I got a lot of wiggle but it just won't move and it looks like what happens is the throttle here is mechanical with a rod that goes down and connects. So I need to disconnect that before I can pull this off. So maybe what I do next is just pull out the battery so I can get a look around in here and I can figure out how to disconnect that. The only thing weird at all about this battery is that it has a positive ground system on the tractor. The battery was also totally dead, so no worries about short-circuiting anything while removing it. The fuel filter kind of stuck out a bit from the gas tank, so I knew that would be a snag to try to get this out, so I removed the fuel filter as well. I wrestled with the gas tank to try to get it off, but uh, still, uh, couldn't get it out. It was a tight fit and there was kind of this wire going around it to some sort of a, a sensor. It went to a plug in the engine block. So I thought I'd have to take that out uh, to get the gas tank out. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's a temperature gauge and there's coolant in there. So I did find a place to drain the antifreeze, but it is so rusted I'm never getting that out. So I'm just going to unscrew this and stick a bucket under it. Just like with emptying the gas tank, this was less than ideal, but when I removed the radiator cap, the coolant flowed out under its own pressure pretty well. At least now that's one thing I can get from around the fuel tank here. I guess there's no reason I can't screw it back in. Some other, uh, what is that, oil pressure? Looks like a little skinny tube covered oil pressure line. And if those are out of the way, woohoo! Got the gas tank out. With the gas tank finally removed, I could actually take a look under the hood, so to speak. We can see the power steering right there and a number of other things. The main one, though, really was the throttle. Up on top here, the throttle is this handle, but it has a rod that comes straight down from it, and that connects right here. I had to disconnect that, pull the pin to get that out to lift the cowl to get the gas tank out. I hooked the throttle back up just to show you what it looks like when it's working right. Essentially, it converts that rotary force into a linear force by connecting to that rod that goes over to the side of the tractor. So here's the throttle connecting rod, and it kind of goes around the corner. It comes to here, goes all the way up front to the governor. So I'm going to disconnect the back end here, and then also disconnect it up at the governor to disconnect the back half of the tractor with everything up by where the engine is. So I'll pull this out. Unhook this. There's just no easy way to see this here, but all I did was remove a pin between this uh, throttle connecting rod and the governor, and then that allowed me to move the rod back to pop the other end. Okay, now back on this end, I can get that out. So basically what I'm trying to do is remove everything from the transmission up to kind of the front axle. This is all engine and engine related stuff. So still here I see this fuel line. Now that was disconnected already on the other end. And this here comes over to the carburetor, it goes up to the choke, so this is the choke cable. I'm going to disconnect it down in here. On the choke cable, I had to loosen the screw and then I could pull the jack out of the cable out. Then I had to remove this little teeny tiny clip and then I could pull the peg to get the cable out. Got one more cable here from the dash. That is the speedometer cable. This cable Follow it down, comes to right back here. 
That is a square cable inside there. So one other line connecting to the front is this right here, which goes up to the, uh, the oil pressure display on the dashboard here. Um, and if I pull it out, oil's gonna leak, so maybe it's time I drain the oil out of this sucker. So of course, all the way down at the bottom, we got the oil pan, we got some plugs there, and I'll drain it. I have no idea when the last time the oil was changed on this tractor, but I could not get the oil plug loose. So again, I slid a couple foot long piece of steel pipe over my wrench for the extra leverage to be able to loosen this. No! I'm an open book. You can rifle through my pages. Oh, oh yeah. Blech. I wonder when the last time that was ever changed. Now there's, there's also a wiring harness going up to the front here. Fortunately, it's not too many wires. Uh, it's the headlights, uh, the generator, chassis, ground, not, not too much else. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark all the wires before I disconnect them uh, using my handy dandy little uh, portable printer thing, which these things are great. Um, and just mark all this and then pull the headlight wires through, disconnect this ground, uh, disconnect the generator, pull those wires back. That'll go right there. Above the distributor here, we've got the primary resistor for the ignition. So I put a label on that, and then I'm going to disconnect this because it's, uh, it's part of that same wire harness. Some of the wiring went behind the spark plug wires, so I pulled those off and then plugged them back in one at a time so I wouldn't accidentally plug them back in the wrong space. With that, I had the wire harness completely pulled away from the front of the tractor. So including the gauges up on the dashboard there, um, if we look, there's really not much connecting the engine to the back half of the tractor anymore. Uh, of the few remaining things, these two hard lines here that come from the hydraulic pump and they go all the way back to the hydraulic controls is really the main thing. Other than that, it's just physical stuff. It's uh, nuts and bolts right here between the engine and transmission. And then the same on the front, nuts and bolts connecting the engine to the front axle and radiator. Um, so it looks like I'm not too terribly far away from splitting this and getting the engine out of there. And there's even enough open space in here that you can now see me through the tractor, uh, which is pretty cool. Until next time, stay charged up. Please keep in mind that this video is part of a series. If you haven't yet, please watch all the other videos in this series. I hope you like these videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, and come check us out at 300mpg.org. Thanks for watching.